you know, I've really been thinking about the Loch Ness Monster for a long time now, and uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about the Loch Ness Monster, but it's one of the things that a lot of people still believe in, and rightly so. I mean, it's obviously a thing that exists. It's, you know, and it's not just one thing. There's, there's it's a, it's a, it's a collection of monsters uh, that live in Loch Ness, Lake Ness in the Scotland, uh, as well as all kinds of other lakes and bodies of water all over the world. Um, you know, stuff was first reported by St. Columba in like 565 in Lake Ness, and you know, it goes all the way up to the Spicers, and like, you know, it's really, there's such a, a, a depth of people who have seen the Loch Ness Monster that it's, it's a, it's a for foregone conclusion at this point. So, I'm, I'm not really trying to convince anyone of anything in this, uh, but what I do have to talk about is a lot of people still have misconceptions about what uh, Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster, really is. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, people who say it's a log, or birds making, like, wake in the, uh, in the lake that people see, or it's a sturgeon. I've, I've seen big sturgeons, they could be yeah, 10 feet long, but that's, sturgeon's a big difference from a Loch Ness Monster. You really have to, it's a big fish, it's not, but a lot of people, even people who believe, they'll say stuff like, oh, it's just big eels, or, oh, it's a green land shark. I don't know what a green land shark is, I've never seen a shark, let alone, I mean, I have seen a shark, but I've never seen a green one, or one that walks on land let alone both, and it, we're not talking about on land, we're talking about in the lake. A lot of people don't know, know that Loch means lake, it's a type of, it's a body of water. That's what they're talking about with the Loch Ness Monster. Now, so people will say, you know, it's those things, but even people who b totally believe in it still think it's like a dinosaur, a plesiosaur, and that's really ridiculous. It's not a dinosaur, it's not a lizard. It's, it's an amphibian. The Loch Ness Monster, Nessie, is, is an amphibian, like a big frog or salamander. Uh, it's probably closest to a salamander with a big long neck. And, like I said, it's not just one. There's not just the Nessie. You know, there's a lot of them all over the world, and that's the thing that people don't consider is, you know, you go over to other places, you know, pretty much every lake in the world has their own uh, serpent or uh, Loch Ness in it, their own Nessie. You know, you can go to uh, Canada, you got uh, Ogopogo on Okanagan Lake, you got uh, uh, Manapogo on Manitoba Lake, you got Igopogo on Lake Simcoe in Canada, you've got, even got the Winnipogo on uh, Lake Winnipegosis uh, over in Canada. And, you know, you get Old Greeny on Cayuga Lake. You got the White River Monster in America. You got the Flathead Lake Monster. You got uh, the Lake Hopatkong Monster. You know, over in Turkey, they got the Lake Van Monster in China. They got the Lake Taichi Monster. They've got uh, the Pinatubo Monster in the Philippines. I mean, the lake, the list just goes on, and they're all salamanders they're all amphibians because that's the thing is you know people would say oh if it was a dinosaur if it was a plesiosaur it would die because that's way too cold water up in lake ness and in canada and they're right but you know you know i live in minnesota and there's frogs there's salamanders they can deal with the cold just fine you know completely fine and you know me and my brother used to go out and we'd collect frogs. We'd gather them up and put them in a two-liter bottle. And, you know, he would do stuff with them, like he'd piss in the bottle, too, or, like, throw it at a wall. Or, you know, I never did that. I didn't I, I didn't put firecrackers in it like he did. But, we, you know, they're all over the place. The, you know, there's a lot of frogs. Um, and a lot of toads and a lot of other amphibians. You know, you find tadpoles and ponds. Uh, in Canada, that's not much different from the part of Minnesota I live in. 
they've got salamanders. They've even got them down in Mexico. They got the atalaxels, the ones that, you know, they're really interesting because they never grow past the one phase, and you can artificially make them uh, grow up into a real salamander. <laughs> you know, and uh, it would never happen naturally, of course, but you know, all over the world, you have these amphibians that live in these big lakes and people report them like in russia you've got uh you know the brosno dragon the devil the the, the devil that lives in that the, the lake up in russia you know you've got you know, the list is extensive you know you got cressy mussy kingsty tarpy kipsy bessie ichi M mucky gritty issy cushy uh, like the bunyip in Australia, they're all over the world. They, you know, they got here before we did. They evolved before we did. And it's not like they're, they're not, you know, people are going to say after my last video, oh, they're interdimensional monsters. They're not. You don't find the bodies because they go underwater and they get eaten by all the fishies. The, the, the fish, they'll eat them. If you've ever seen on uh, YouTube.com, they have videos where it'll show a whale body go to the bottom of the ocean. And all the starfish and the lampreys and the little uh, biter worms and all the other things that go through the corpse and they don't leave anything but bones. And you know, uh, Lake Nessie, Lake Ness, uh, the White River, you know, Lake Van, they're all really deep. You know, you can't, they're not connected to the, the ocean. You can't just bring in a submarine and you can't afford a submarine. You, you know, the, they, they did that once in Lake Ness, but Lake Ness is the only the most famous one. And so that's why there's no remains. They don't float. They go out of the bottom. They get eaten by all the fishies, and all that's left is the bones, and they get covered up with weeds and rocks and sand. Because if you've ever been to a lake, there's a lot of sand, and uh, the, you know, you'll be swimming, sw swimming along past you know, a certain point, and you'll feel stuff touching your legs, and you'll start having panic attacks, because you think there's a, there's a, something grabbing you, and it's not, it's seaweed, it's, you know, even in the lake, uh, um, it's not lake weed, that's a different thing, but, you know, uh, you know, a kid, they don't know if it's, you know, they don't live in the sea, so they're like, well, well I don't live ni next to the sea, so what's this stuff, and, uh, it's plant matter. They're like uh, plants that grow, and they get um, they suck in oxygen just from the water, like the fish. But they also get the oxygen, like kelp, from the air, um, and that's how they work. So, and they'll you know, or you'll have little fish sometimes, the tiny ones that'll you know peck at your toes maybe, but. Um, it's seaweed that's touching you, so you shouldn't have a panic attack. Uh, the worst you'll run into, if you live where I live at least, is like a northern. Uh, they're not even as dangerous as pike, but you know, you could maybe a big catfish, you accidentally get your hand caught in a catfish and it'll drag you down. But that's not even a big northern thing, that's something that happens down in the south, maybe. Or maybe one of those rivers in like a poor person country where they have the big fish with big, or like someone. You're, you're near the Atlantic and you have a freshwater and a bull shark comes in, but none of those are amphibians. And um, we are talking about uh, lake nest monsters and other sea serpents. Like, I live in Minnesota. Uh, there's a town called Crosby and Ironton. Uh, Ironton and Crosby, they're, they're right next to each other. And they have a lake and they even, in the park right next to the lake, they have a big statue of a sea serpent that people reported. And, uh, you know, that's where uh, the jet skis were invented. Um, it's either, no, it's jet skis or uh, the, the, the snow version, snowmobiles. One of those two was invented or tested in Crosby, Minnesota, I think. Uh, that's what I heard from my dad. Uh, I, so, you know. And uh, my brother, he always, he always repeated my dad a lot on a lot of things. Not everything. You know, uh, my dad, he never did things to toads, uh, but, and he doesn't want to go out hunting any of these monsters with us either. And that's the thing with, uh, these types of monsters is you need, you know, even a 
even more than you would need to deal with some of the stuff I talk about. You, you know, a 20 millimeter uh, rocket, not a rocket, a bullet could, you know, might not even kill it. Like there's a there's an atla crocodile, uh, and I can't remember his name. It's the general or the man, uh, but it's a real real crocodile that's really old and he's really he's one of the biggest and he's just covered in bullet holes because he eats so many people and other things and they've tried to hunt him and he he's not taking it uh i can't remember his name uh, i'm sorry but if you look it up uh big crocodile eat man bullet holes on google you'll probably find it eventually if you look hard enough uh there was a movie about it and no one knows that, I mean, I'm sure people know, it, but it's based on a true story. It's I'm not. It's a real crocodile that did all this. Uh, and, you know, crocodiles are nasty, but they are not. They don't live where I live because uh, it's too cold. But it's not too cold for amphibians, and that's the point I'm trying to come across here is Lake Ness, the Nessie, and all these others, they're, you know, they live in Russia, Scotland, Turkey, uh, northern Japan, and they're all too cold for these big lizards that live in the water. In the, but it's not too cold for a big salamander. So you have to take that into consideration. And uh, so you need like a big electrified harpoon or uh, dynamite. You could do the thing like in Jaws where you could get it to bite down on uh, like a big uh, condensed air tank or some sort of like propane uh, and shoot it with uh, something that would make it explode in its mouth and that would probably kill it. Uh, it didn't kill Jaws, but you know, Jaws is just, uh, if not really a, th uh, a real shark, a real shark would die. And people ask me about the Megalodon uh, and that thing. Ooh, boy howdy, that's a big shark, right? Uh, if you look at the size of the teeth that's bigger than you know you could stand in the open jaws and they wouldn't be open for too long if you were around them um i think the megalodon probably still exists it's really you know it's a big scary shark the sharks lasted forever so you never know right uh it could be living down in the deep uh eating all the we can't go that deep but they would have to eat a lot of things and they probably wouldn't want to eat humans that much they'd have to eat big uh whales or uh those giant or colossal squids but you know the the megalodon that's a lot more plausible to me than a greenland shark and apparently that's what scientists say nessie is so you know you put the pieces together in your mind and you know what do you you end up with a big megalodon on your plate and you're like oh how did i get this and you know the japanese fishermen they pulled it up and cooked it up and shark fin soup because the Japanese fishermen, they don't really care that much. I mean, they're always getting attacked by the Greenpeace. <laughs> Greenpeace. You know, but Greenpeace, the eco-terrorists, they attack them because they eat all the sharks and the dolph dolphins. dolphins. Um, but but then Greenpeace goes around and they fuck up the Nazca lines. And oh, phew, Don't get me started on the Nazca lines. Those things are important. It's the same thing I'm saying uh, about... The interdimensional uh, United Nations, if, where if we don't have people to vouch for us, we're never going to be accepted on this big stage. And the aliens are another stage, like interdimensional, not interdimensional, intergalactically, uh, you know, big, big out there. There's people, there's other races that won't trust us if we d if we can't trust them back. And that's what Nazca was was about. Uh, you know, we. We created those for a reason. It wasn't, you know, they, we didn't have helicopters or planes to look down at the Nazca lines. So who were they for? They were for the, the the sky gods that came down, and they would give us knowledge, and or they would, like, I don't think they gave us too much too much knowledge. That puts a bit too much that like that we're just idiots. I don't think we're idiots. We created a lot of stuff by ourselves, but you know, there, there it could have been like uh, reality TV, some sort of spectator sport where they were filming us and bringing it back to their planet and you know that that's fine with me i don't mind that much if they want to do that but if we're destroying the nazca lines now you're driving over it to make a statement about uh, not burning down a rainforest or whatever that's a bit short-sighted and isn't that you know it's we can't it's 
There's no foresight there. There's no no one looking over these sort of decisions that they these people make, and it's just disgusting. It's um, there's no oversight. Uh, there's no planning, really. I mean, they plan these things, but they don't think them through before they do it, you know. So, personally, I think they should just leave the Japanese alone, you know. If they really want to do their thing, this peaceful protest is always the best type of protest if you don't want tear gas thrown all over you. And I'm sure if the Japanese started shooting 40 millimeter tear gas grenades onto the Rainbow Warrior or whatever, they'd learn to fuck right off. And they, they, they'd be justified, you know? And so, the main point here is Nessie, and, you know, speaking about Japan, you've, you've got the Issy and the Kushi, they're amphibians. Like a frog, or a salamander. Or one of those uh, little ones that's like a snake, but it has front arms, but no back arms. And they, they're really cute, but they're a salamander. Uh, they're a type of amphibian. And, um... So who knows, you know, maybe someday down the line you'll get a guy with a hunting rifle and he'll be on it to, 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 to bring in a, like, a, a Nessie tadpole. Because um, they all have those little, the, the amphibians are weird where they start different and then they end up. Um, so that's just how it is. So I hope I've taught you a little bit about Lake Ness and the, the Loch Ness Monster. Because, again, the main misconception is people think it's a plesiosaur, and they don't understand that the dinosaurs went extinct. It's not a plesiosaur, it's not a tyrannosaur, it's not a mosasaur. You know, they, people, they, they, they watch too much Jurassic Park, and they think that they know everything about the natural world, and, uh, and that's, you know, it's, it's all fake. The, like, the velociraptor, they didn't look like that. Velociraptors were little chickens, and it's called the Diagenesis. Or whatever it's really called, the bit the big one, and they just like, oh, that's not a good enough name, so we're gonna call on the Velociraptor, and they don't have feathers. They had feathers in the fossils. They had feathers. Even my brother, he, he he's with me here. They were like, they think the Tyrannosaurus, if it didn't have, if it if it had feathers, it wouldn't be scary. That'd be scary if, if you ever uh, had a run in with a with a with an ostrich. <laughs> Trust me, an ostrich, a cassowary, an emu, they'll kill you. They will straight up kill you. The terror birds, those would have killed you. The, ha the giant host eagle, those probably killed you. Um, f you know, so, a tyrannosaurus, that'd still be scary even if it was covered in feathers. So, just to think things through before you make these dumb decisions, like, oh... A dinosaur is not scary if it has bird feathers on it. Because birds are scary. Uh, both in that sense, where they can be big and fast and murder you. But even owls, they're... You can't trust owls. You just can't. You know, if you've ever seen a barn owl, you look at a barn owl, you're like, Wow, that's not natural. If it's just its face, the screeching, screaming noises they make. They're just no good. They're no good. You know, I'm not one of those people who thinks that the the Mothman was just a great horned owl. That's not. The Mothman was its own thing, another interdimensional being, as we've talked about. You know, and that's the topic for another time, the Mothman and other uh, similar bird-winged uh, man. But the great horned owl is still very spooky. The, uh, the herons... And cranes and owls are all very scary. Scarier than a lizard, even. Unless it's a big lizard like a Komodo dragon or a crocodile or a caiman. But amphibians aren't scary, is the thing. That's why people don't think of it. But an, an amphibian like Nessie, that is scary. That thing will eat you. It'll eat you. Well, you know, maybe it's even like a poison dart frog where you touch it and you die. We don't know, because people aren't putting enough thought into this. So, that's all I want to impart. I'll end the video here, but thank you for watching, and thank you for keeping an open mind. Uh, 
I really appreciate it. So if you have anything to say about Nessie or your local lakes, similar lake monster that is an amphibian, please let me know. Have a nice one, everyone.